Greetings, scientists. I want to thank those of you that shared your wonderings last week. You had some fantastic questions, and a lot of you noticed the pattern between shape and mass, and that is how much things weigh. And we're wondering why the paper ball fell so much faster than the flat paper, even though they weighed the same. And how was it that the two bottles landed at almost the same time, even though the red bottle was almost one kilogram heavier? Sophia was wondering, why does shape make a difference? To answer that question, we first need to address Amelia's wondering of, what are forces? And Blue's question of, where do forces come from? Greetings scientists, welcome back. Now we've been learning how a force is either a push or a pull on an object. And when those forces are unbalanced, that object is going to move. And when they're balanced or they're the same, one is not stronger than the other, the object will stay the same. I'm going to show you a, another example of some push and pulling forces and how they make an object move. This will be my object. Bodhi, you ready? And this is a pushing force. And this is a pulling force. Here's a diagram showing the two forces that were acting on the bottles and the pieces of paper from last week's investigation. Gravity is a force that is always pulling objects down to the ground. And drag is a fancy name for what you may have heard of as air resistance, that is the air pushing. So we have again our push and pull forces. Gravity is pulling the bottle down and drag is pushing up on the bottle. Just like how parachutes work, drag pushes up on the parachute, causing it to slow down. But as you can see here, and even looking at the arrows is kind of a clue, is that gravity is stronger than drag. So gravity has the larger arrow, drag has a smaller arrow, and even though drag is still pushing up on that bottle, gravity is stronger, it wins, and therefore the bottle moves and falls down to the floor. This diagram shows the forces that are acting on the wadded up piece of paper, the paper ball, and the flat piece of paper. As always, gravity is trying to pull objects down, and this is no exception. Gravity is pulling the two pieces of paper down, down, down to the floor, but drag, the air, is trying to push back up on it. Again, gravity is stronger, the stronger force wins, therefore the paper moves down and falls to the floor. A lot of you were wondering why the paper ball fell so much faster than the flat piece of paper even though they had the same mass. And the answer has to do with, as some of you already figured out, shape. As you can see in this diagram here, drag only has so much area or places that it can push up on the wadded up paper ball. It's smaller, it's compact, there's not much room for air to push on it. But if you look at that flat piece of paper, there is lots of area, lots of space for air to push on it, and that was why it fell so slow. This diagram shows why the two bottles fell at the same speed. It's not Obviously, it didn't matter mass. One weighed way more than the other. It has to do with the shape. And in this instance, these two bottles are the exact same shape. And that means that gravity is pulling on them the same, and drag was pushing on them the same. It had the same amount of shape, the same space for air to actually push up on it when it was falling down to the ground. Again, gravity was stronger. Gravity wins. The bottles fall to the ground. A lot of you observed very closely and noticed that the air-filled bottle bounced around a lot higher than the juice-filled bottle and were wondering, why did it do that? Well, believe it or not, the floor actually pushed up on the bottle as gravity pulled it down. Sounds kind of crazy, I know, but think about this. Gravity acts on all objects on our planet the same way, right? It is acting on you right now. It's pulling you down, except you're not falling. You have balanced forces. That is because the chair that you're probably sitting in is pushing up on you the same force that gravity is pulling down on you. So your forces are balanced and there's no motion. Well, 
when gravity pulled the bottle and it crashed onto the floor, the floor pushed back and its force was stronger than gravity. So in that case, the floor wins and pushed the bottle up. Now eventually, the bottle kind of bounces around a little bit and the forces become less and less and less until they are even, like in this diagram. Here eventually, the bottle stops moving, the forces are balanced, gravity, the pull of gravity and the push of the floor are the same and the bottle will not move until another force acts upon it at a later time. But Mr. Corey, but Mr. Corey, you may be wondering, why then did the bottle filled with air bounce around so high, but the juice filled bottle, the red bottle, hardly even moved. It just kind of bumped and flipped over. What's going on there? Well, this answer has to do with mass. You see, heavier objects like the red bottle are a lot harder to move than lighter objects like the air-filled bottle. All right, I hope that helps answer at least some of your questions that you may have, but now it's time to get to this week's activity. Greetings, scientists. By now, you know that gravity is a pulling force, and if I let go of an object, it's going to pull that object down to the ground. And we also learned from dropping the bottles that the floor is also going to push up on this object when it lands. So if I'm using this rubber bouncy ball, gravity is going to pull it down and the floor is going to push it back up. Today, we're going to do an investigation and see what happens when we drop this bouncy ball from different heights. So over here, I have um, some meter sticks and some rulers taped up behind me so we can make some accurate measurements and measure with precision, just like a mathematician would do. And what we have is down here, I started from zero centimeters from the floor all the way up to 200 centimeters, which is two meters in height. Now these yellow stickies up here with these different colored arrows are gonna show me the one change I'm gonna do in this investigation. I'm gonna keep everything else the same, but I'm gonna change one thing, and that is from how high I drop this blue bouncy ball. As you can see, we're gonna drop it from 200 centimeters, then 180 centimeters, 160 centimeters, 140 centimeters, 120 centimeters, and finally 100 centimeters high. And what we're gonna do is measure how high the blue ball bounces. Now that's gonna be my change. So I'm gonna keep everything else the same so I can have a fair test. So I'm going to release this ball and the gravity pull it down. And then we, the only change we're going to do is change the dropping height. And of course, we'll measure how high it goes. So for example, I'm going to start at 200 centimeters. And I'm going to make sure the bottom of my ball is right at 200 centimeters. And I'm going to drop it. And then I'm going to measure how high. Now there you saw that it hit the meter stick. And that wouldn't be a fair test, would it? So I'm going to do a re redo and make sure that has a clear falling zone and also a clear area when it gets when the floor pushes it back up. Three, two, one, go. There we go. So it hit right here at its highest point. And even then, I think I might want to do that when I hit the ruler. And I'm just going to go. And bingo. I dropped it. And then what I'll be able to do is get an accurate measurement when I'm doing this without the video. And I'll mark it how high they drop from each of these different heights. And we'll find out what effect the forces have on this bouncy ball when dropped from different heights. I didn't video the actual investigation, but I'm going to show you some photographs of all the results from all the drops. So feel free to take a pause in the video if you need to. This first picture shows, um, with the red arrows, shows that I dropped it from a height of 200 centimeters and the ball bounced 150 centimeters high. The yellow arrow shows the second drop from 180 centimeters high 
and the ball bounced up 135 centimeters. The green arrows show the ball being dropped from 160 centimeters high and the ball bounced up 120 centimeters high. And the blue arrows show the ball was released from 140 centimeters high and bounced all the way up 105 centimeters high. Now this is where you come in. You are going to use the measurements that I provided from this investigation to look for patterns and use those patterns to predict future motion. In other words, I want you to make a prediction based on what we know so far of how high do you think the ball will bounce when it's dropped from 120 centimeters as shown in the, with the orange arrow here and how high do you think it'll bounce when we drop it from 100 centimeters high as shown with the pink arrow. Once you've used patterns to predict the motion of how high the bouncy ball will bounce, then it's your turn to explain what, what you think by constructing explanations and supporting it with detailed evidence. Everything you need to know to be successful in this assignment is in Seesaw. So please check out the student template and read the directions carefully and go from there. Good luck, scientists. And most of all, have fun doing science!